Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today is the day. Today is the day that I'm going to share with you all my entire designer handbag collection. It has been a long time coming and I finally decided to share this with you guys because I feel like I've reached purse or handbag peace. Apparently it is a thing. I've reached the point where I'm beyond content with my handbag collection and foresee it staying this way for the upcoming year or two. There aren't any bags I want to switch out or feel like I really really lack in my collection or need in my collection, besides a bridal bag, which I'm still not sure if I need need or not. Of course, never say never. If you were to offer me an Hermes Craig Birkin or Kelly, or a Jean Poussant like a baby yellow Kelly dance, or an exquisite house to tweed classic flap, I'll drop everything and take it. But right now, I'm very happy with my collection and I think this is a perfect time to share with you all my 2022 luxury slash contemporary designer handbag collection. If you're new here, hi, my name is Ida. I make videos about luxury handbags, fashion, lifestyle vlogs, and basically anything in between. So if that is something that you're interested in, don't forget to hit the subscribe button below. I'd love for you to join me in this journey of mine. Of course, just like any other luxury handbag videos out there, I do want to have a little disclaimer. This is by no means bragging. It is a collection that has been in the making for over 10 years. One or two were like hand-me-downs from my mom, but basically everything else is purchased with my own money, some were milestones, and just hold a lot of sentimental value. I'm totally aware that this is beyond necessary, but I just really enjoy handbags besides being a slight holder. I love how they complete and elevate each look. They're fun and can be investment pieces as well if I ever decide to sell them. You know, some people collect fine wine, spend their money on audio systems, collecting cars. I just happen to really enjoy handbags. So if this is not the type of video that you would enjoy or understand, I don't really know why you would have clicked in here otherwise, but please choose something else to watch. There are so many great videos out there that would be better time spent. So with that out of the way, I'll be sharing my collection in designer alphabetical order just because I simply cannot remember the exact order that I purchased them from. I have already went through my Chanel and Louis Vuitton collection in two separate videos. I will be including those pieces in this as well just because it is my entire designer handbag collection. But if you're looking for something a little bit more bite-sized, I'll be sure to link them in the screen here as well as at the description bar below. Now, I don't want this to be an hour-long video, so if you want me to share my thoughts or do a review on any of these particular bags, just let me know in the comments below. So with no further ado, grab a coffee, make yourself a cup of tea, and let's get right into it. Let's start with A for Anya Highmarch. Anya Highmarch is an English designer. This is the Anya Highmarch Eyes Leather Backpack, one of the hand-me-downs from my mom. Though I don't think I've ever used it yet, it is a very well-made structured backpack. There is a small compartment at the front featuring Anya's kind of signature playful eyes design with card slots inside the small compartment as well as a zipper pouch in the main compartment. Great size, perfect for those days when you need to be a little bit more hands-free like picnic or weekend walks to the town center. Moving on to Balenciaga. This is my only Balenciaga left in my collection. I used to have the Balenciaga city bag but I actually sold that one because I got it secondhand and the leather wasn't in great condition. This is from the men's line way back in 2012. This is the Balenciaga pouch or clutch featuring white leather with white hardware, which I love. There is definitely wear and tear and discoloration, but I adore this clutch. I don't always gravitate towards it just because it is a clutch, but when I do, I really enjoy this piece. And this is my Bottega Veneta Mini Jody. Such a cutie. I love the modern take on the classic leather reef, and the leather is just so buttery smooth. Moving on, we'll be talking about Chanel. This is my very first Chanel piece, the Chanel Wallet on Chain in CC logo with caviar leather and silver hardware. This bag is coming to almost 11 years old now. A discontinued piece, but I still use this to up to this very day. Super handy, holds enough, can't go wrong. And then I acquired this Chanel, which is the Chanel Promizzo flat bag. One of you guys actually commented to let me know the name of this bag, which I really appreciate. I don't know, I just love knowing the names of these bags, not that it matters. I think this Tramizzo bag seals my need for any Chanel classic flaps because this pretty much is a Chanel classic flap, but a bit more modern, minimalistic, and unique with its accordion layouts. From the sound of the chain, you guessed it, the Chanel boy. 
I feel like everyone has Chanel Boy in their collection. I noticed that I've been reaching for this bag quite often this winter. I love the chunky chain overcoats paired with chunky boots or Uggs. Effortless but slightly edgy. I'm thankful to have come across this bag and gotten it when I got it. Next, the Chanel Square Mini in caviar leather metallic silver. One of my favorites. This one here is of a metallic caviar leather. I feel like it is slightly different to the silver colors that Chanel came out with a few seasons ago. I feel like mine is not as glittery. I've paired it with a HRH top handle chain, which I always get asked questions about, so I'll be sure to link them in the description bar below. But what can I say? I love to have more square minis in my collection. Now, moving on to the two new additions that I acquired in the year 2021, the Chanel Trendy CC. This bag has been on my wish list for over a year. Although I made this purchase in 2021, it is the older version of the Trendy CC, meaning it has a buttery gold hardware and a detachable shoulder strap. It is a very elegant lady bag, buttery smooth lambskin, and holds relatively enough with the three compartments. Last but not least of my Chanel's, the Chanel Mini Belt Bag. I guess this is considered a small leather good, but I for real use this as a proper bag. Holds my cards, my lip balm, and maybe a piece of tissue. Great for a quick grocery run. The chains can be adjusted. I have also purchased this chain stopper so that I can adjust and even make it into a top handle. G for Givenchy and Gucci. This is my only Givenchy. The black crinkled leather mini Pandora or the Pandora crossbody bag. Hmm, what can I say about this bag? Can't really go wrong with this bag. I mean, the crinkled leather kind of hides any aging of the leather. The only thing I would have to say about this bag is the drop length of this shoulder strap. Because I'm more towards the shorter side, this shoulder strap actually hits quite low on my body. But I do carry this at the crook of my arm, kind of like a clutch as well. I do love the trapezium shape of the Pandora. Although I don't use it as much, this is not going anywhere in my collection. Also for G of course, Gucci! I have two Gucci's. This is my very first designer bag ever the Gucci Boston. I really don't see myself parting with this bag. Every time Brian asks me when am I going to sell this and I'm like, never. This, in my opinion, is a classic, kind of like the same bowling style bag to the Louis Vuitton Speedy. It is towards the more bigger sized bag. So yeah, this is my very first designer Gucci bag. My next Gucci is the Gigi Marmont small shoulder bag in red. My only red bag in my collection. I purchased this purely to wear during all sorts of festive seasons. Christmas, Chinese New Year, Valentine's Day. It might not sound like a very legit reason, but I really enjoy pulling this bag out during these seasons. I personally wear a lot of black and white, which might not be like the most festive of colors, but paired with this bag, instantly season appropriate. I love the hearts at the back, so cute. Red is a primary color, so even if it's not those festive seasons, I can always pair this with a red lip or white dress, and it'll still look amazing. H and that only stands for Hermes. I cannot believe I'm sharing with you my Hermes collection. It has been quite a journey. One of my favorites is the Picotin 18 in Nora and Palladium hardware. This is such a great introductory Hermes bag in my opinion. This is the size 18 and it holds a lot. I currently have a Samarga bag insert inside just because the inside of the Picotin is of a raw finish, but I love using the Picotin in the city or to go to work. The big surface area and the four feet at the bottom kind of allows the bag to sit straight at all times, which I really appreciate. Next, my Hermes Mini Kelly in Epsom leather palladium hardware. And I use this bag in all occasions. Brunch, grocery shops, dinner, weddings. I love the versatility of the Mini Kelly. You can dress it up or you can dress it down. Although it is of a mini size, it fits everything that I need. My phone also sits very well inside, which is great. The shoulder strap also sits very well on my body frame. Black goes with everything. Can't say enough about the Mini Kelly. Now, moving on to Birkins. This is my very first Birkin, the Birkin 25 Inglaise Moet. Togo leather palladium hardware. I was very specific with my very first Birkin. I wanted Glaze Moet because of this beautiful, cool tone, true gray. I sourced her for a reputable Hermes reseller in Hong Kong. I'm so glad I insisted in the size 25 because I don't really see myself ever using a 30. I think a 30 would be actually quite big on my body frame. I wear her all year round, works great with white summer dresses or winter coats. Such a beautiful piece. So yeah, this is my very first Birkin. Next up is my Kelly 25 in Nora 
Sadier Palladium Hardware in box leather. Although I've had my eyes on the Kelly in box or Madame leather for so long, I only wanted this smooth, shiny leather for my very first Kelly. I feel like the 25 is definitely harder to come by than the size 28. I kind of wish this is of a size 28. Given that it is a cellier and it is of a very structured box leather, I find it sometimes harder or troublesome to get in and out of the bag. Although the Kelly does come with a strap, I feel like it doesn't hold as much as my Birkin 25. This is kind of the only thing that I want to change about this bag. And because of this, I think I'm definitely more of a Birkin girl than a Kelly girl. But this size does go better with my body frame. And I really do like how the Kelly comes with a bigger handle. So yeah, this is my Kelly 25. I might look out for a vintage Kelly 28 in gold hardware in the near future. But for now, this is still one of my holy grails. And now, let me introduce to you my newest Birkin. My Birkin 25 in Nora, touch with a matte alligator and gold hardware. This is the piece that I have on my wish list with Hermes. To be honest, I wasn't expecting to have acquired this before my 30th birthday, but I wasn't going to turn it down either when being offered from the store. So the touch line essentially means that it has touches of exotic leather. And for the Birkin touch, the handles, the flap, the sangles, and the crochets are in croc, and the rest is in Togo leather. And I believe the square symbol means that the exotic is in alligator Mississippi Nessus. This is the only bag that I truly baby and only pull her out during special occasions. Oh, I just realized I haven't removed the stickers. Maybe I should do that. But yeah, I can honestly look at her all day. Now, moving on, we have a Cara number. Kara is a contemporary American brand founded by an American Hong Kong designer. Their designs are fun and this classic black leather backpack is actually really well made. Speaking of Kara, I'm actually eyeing one of their mini fringe crystal totes for my wedding, which I'll insert a picture here. But I haven't bite the bullet yet because we still have a few months to go. But yeah, just like any other backpacks, great for road trips, holidays, a very hearty bag. And we also have a little cancel piece here, a very fun pop of color pouch. It is very thin and you can definitely see a lot of wear and tear. But this is great when you're feeling a little bit more colorful, go to parties and whatnot. Moving on to Loewe. This is my puzzle bag, my one and only Loewe. I got this in Barcelona, Spain, which is where the design house originated from. For all the colors that I see the puzzle bag comes in, the white is still my absolute favorite color. I love the contrast piping against the white. I love the shape of this bag, the handle, the strap length. It holds a lot as well and it's perfect. Apparently there are multiple ways of wearing this bag, but I never really looked into it. I normally just stick to the top handle using it on the crook of my arm or with the shoulder strap. Now we have 10 Louis Vuitton, so let's see if we can get through this quickly. The Louis Vuitton Morel, my newest Louis Vuitton edition. I've talked about this in multiple videos, so you can definitely check those out. I'll pop them on the screen here or at the description bar below. The Louis Vuitton Bold Chapeau Supple in monogram canvas. Kind of like a hat box style bag. I prefer wearing this without the luggage tag that it comes in and just with this little lock right here. The straps are adjustable, but I normally just keep it in this length so I can wear it around my shoulders. Love this bag for its unique shape. I've got to wear her more. Louis Vuitton Pochette Discovery in Monogram Shadow. Technically, this is Brian's iPad case, but we do use it as a clutch from time to time. Beautiful calfskin finish, almost like a briefcase clutch vibes. Moving on, the Palm Springs Mini. I do have a What's in My Bag video featuring the Palm Springs Mini. I love that this piece has a reverse monogram incorporated into the design. Recently, I've been using this as a top handle, but if we were to go to travel or go down to the city, then I can use that one strap to make it into a crossbody or two straps and make it into a standard mini backpack. Following is my Louis Vuitton multi pochette accessoire. I feel like everyone must have seen it at least once on the internet. Mine is in the khaki colorway. This is kind of like my on the go bag whenever I want to be hands free or needs to be a little bit more active, like a hike or something, I will bring this with me. The multi pouches allow me to kind of section things up. I do prefer to put my more personal items like my passport, my heart holders in this bigger pocket here and more like miscellaneous stuff like lip balm tissue at the front pocket here. Speaking of pochette then, we have here the mini pochette, 
which is considered more of a small leather good, but I use it just like any other bags. Holds my passport, card holder, lip balm, tissue, again the essentials, and that's pretty much what I carry nowadays. A rather hard piece to find. Mine is made in France, which is meaninglessly more special for some reason. Now, if you were to ask me to pick one Louis Vuitton, I will have to pick the Louis Vuitton Capucine BB. I was just in the car the other day with Brian and I just said to him, I actually really love my Louis Vuitton Capucine. It was an impulse purchase but it felt so right and I'm so glad that I laid my eyes on it during the holidays in-store event back in Hong Kong. Now, the Capucine does come in an array of sizes. I believe there is the MM, the PM, the BB, the mini and the nano. It is available in classic leather, seasonal exotics, and a lot of different fabrics as well. Mine is in black leather with a little exotic handle. The capucine is also considered as one of Louis Vuitton's flagship designs. I love how classic it looks. Believe it or not, this bag is already five years old. I can't tell you where are the signs of wear and tear because it's still in really good shape. I like to pair my capucine with a strap here or with a chain strap, which are both purchased separately. I just think these straps brings out a different character or extraness to this bag. I'm planning to do a review on the Louis Vuitton capucine soon, so watch this face. This is my first Louis Vuitton, the Louis Vuitton monogram canvas never full in size MM. This bag has been through so much. Countless uni days, I used to throw my textbooks, my laptop, my hoodie, my water bottle, everything inside. It is a tote, that's why I don't usually gravitate towards this anymore. But if I were to travel, I will consider this bag with my Louis Vuitton key pulse. A oldie, but a goodie. I actually have a Longchamp tote here as well, but yeah, that's that. Just quickly then, this is my Karagami pouch in the Catagram print. This is mainly just to celebrate my love for cats. Nothing too crazy, I don't use it too often. The little pouches are all in their own individual dust bag. So if you want to take a look at them more, I will have it in my Louis Vuitton collection video. Last but not least then for my Louis Vuitton collection, this is also considered a small leather good, I believe. It is the Knees BB. Is this the Knees BB or Knees Mini? This is the Knees Mini because it came out with a Knees Nano, I believe. It is supposed to be a little vanity or small makeup pouch, although I do store like shampoos and conditioner in this bag when we do travel or stay in hotels. Otherwise, I mainly use this as a bag on its own. I do have a review on this on my channel, so I'll be sure to link them on the screen here or in the description bar below if you want to find out more. Continuing with what I would say the last third bit of my handbag collection, we have a Maison Martin Magella with H&M collaboration crossover bag, the upside down purse. This is one of the collaborations H&M did way back in 2012, so 10 years ago now, wow. But nonetheless, it does have all the Maison Martin Magella kind of like DNA in this design. It is made out of leather and I believe this is kind of like a reissue of one of the Maison Martin Magella 2006 collections. You can carry it like this or turn it around and open your purse like that. I tend to use this bag during more casual occasions when I want to be a little bit subtle, I guess. We have here a MCM black leather bag. MCM is a German-based designer, but for some reason, I really associated this brand with like Korea K-pop culture because it used to be quite a hit in Korea with their monogram signature backpacks. I did pick this up in Seoul and thankfully chosen a more muted MCM style of bags. This bag, given all of the other bags in my collection, I don't actually reach out for this bag quite often because it is a very big kind of like briefcase style bag. It has a top handle and a crossbody strap. It is a very well-made bag. It is kind of like in a Saffiano finish, clicks open like so, huge compartments, and very subtle branding. Like if I were to go to a job interview, do a presentation or a pitch meeting, I'll probably use this bag. But will I be doing any pitch or presentations anytime soon? Probably not. But because this is such a great quality bag, I've yet to part with it. This is my second designer handbag ever the Miu Miu bow bag. The Miu Miu Vitello range used to be such an iconic range when I was in boarding school and just couldn't get my mind off it. I have been meaning to let this one go for quite some time now because it is quite a girly bag. There are two bows on the side and Miu Miu in general is quite a feminine brand. I just don't know when I'll be reaching for this next, but 
either the price wasn't right or what, it is still in my collection. I'm not actively listing this bag out now, so I'm going to enjoy this piece in my collection for now. Within the same color family, this is my Mark by Marc Jacobs Classic Hillier Hobo Q bag. This is such a great bag. One of the bags that I got from my university days. The leather is so buttery smooth. I was actually going to sell this, but after trying it on, it is such a classic shape and color. So I decided to keep it. It holds a lot inside. It's the classic kind of like Mark by Mark Jacobs pattern. I used to love Mark by Mark Jacobs. They used to have a bookstore in Mayfair with the cutest like stationaries and accessories. Though I think Mark by Mark Jacobs is a discontinued line. I'll still be reaching for this during the days when I need to carry a little bit more with me. Before we move on to Prada, we have a little Pop and Suki small camera bag. I don't know if you would consider Pop and Suki a contemporary designer, but more of an Instagram brand. This here is of a green mock croc camera bag. I used this once during Brian's graduation. Although there is nothing luxury designer about it, it is quite a classy, vintage-y, dainty bag. I purchased this short strap here separately. It did came with a very long crossbody strap that I never used. But with that said, if there is a date night or movie night and I feel like carrying something green, I'll definitely gravitate towards this. So a great addition actually. Prada or nada? My very first Prada is the mini Saffiano promenade bag in baby pink. Such a little cutie. Although it is baby pink, you can definitely dress it down. With leggings, a crop hoodie, pair with this, that's a look. It comes with a strap, though I don't normally carry it with a strap. I normally hold it like a top handle, like so. Kind of extra, but works. The other Prada is my Prada Nylon Re-Edition 2000. Again, I think a lot of us are quite familiar with this bag by now. It was all over social media, or still is. I recently made a comparison of this with the Louis Vuitton Morel, of which again, I'll pop them in the screen or the description bar below. We are finally reaching for my very last bag. And this one is a special one. This is my vintage Yves Saint Laurent black leather Arabic trapezium shoulder bag. This is a hand-me-down from my mom and I'll forever take care of this bag. I believe it is from the 1990s, so similar age to me. It is just a single flap trapezium bag with the iconic and still relevant Yves Saint Laurent logo. It has a zipper pouch inside, the authenticity card, and its original dust bag, which is not in the best condition. The straps here are detachable, so if you want to wear it, as a clutch, you can. I recently wore this during my trip down to London and I really enjoyed using this. <sighs> wow, that's it. If you're still tuning in, thank you so much for watching the entire luxury contemporary designer handbag collection. It has taken me a while to gather all of these bags, find out their official names, etc, etc. So if you enjoyed this video, I would highly appreciate it if you can give this video a thumbs up. Otherwise, if you want to share any thoughts on my collection or if there are any particular bags that you want me to share more information on, like my opinions, my thoughts, etc, let me know in the comments below. Again, thank you so much for tuning in. I might take a little break from filming luxury handbags and more casual vlogs next. Nonetheless, I look forward to seeing you in my next one. But until then, take care guys. Bye!